Welcome to Twist and Brush Liquid Studio. In this video I'll give an overview of some of the features and the usage of the brushes in Liquid Studio. If you've used any of the Twisted Brush Studio programs before, you'll probably be familiar with uh, the basic functionality and, and features and terminology used in this program as well. Uh, when you first start up Twisted Brush Liquid Studio, you get a layout similar to this. Uh, you could also get to this when you do File, New. You'll end up uh, with layers. You'll have a background layer which actually will be invisible in Liquid Studio and you'll start your work on layer 2. That's the default. Uh, just to give an overview of some of the uh, areas within the interface, here's a preview area. Here's where you'll control your brush size and density uh, depending upon your brush and the opacity. Here's your brush selection palette, your layers, and here's where you can adjust colors and select uh, color history. And just to give a quick look at how brushes are selected, uh, here is what's called a shortcut menu. If you click one that's already selected, it will pull up your art set, and then you can select a different brush if you wish. If you select the little arrow here, it actually pull up a menu and you can select a different art set. So Liquid Studio comes with um, a modeling art set, a paint art set, and utility. So if you select a different art set and a different brush, it will load here. So I'm going to go back to the, the default in Liquid Basic. So what I'm going to do is just draw uh, something very simple just to give an idea of some of the features and hopefully uh, as I work on this you'll get some ideas of, uh, of how these brushes are intended to be used. So the liquid brushes they have all defaulting to color black. You can change the colors if you want but it's not really necessary. The idea behind the liquid brushes is to create a silhouette of an object uh, or multiple silhouettes using the layers and then paint them afterwards. Uh, and I'll show you the advantage of doing taking that approach. So let's just start something. As you'll, you'll see when you start to use these brushes, the liquid brushes, uh, the idea is you can somewhat model them. So this is the liquid basic. It's just putting down some some fresh paint. But then you can go and do go to something like a liquid smoother, one of my favorites and then basically adjust adjust it. So I'm going to do here is model a, a sphere. And it's not intended to be technically perfect, but uh, to give you, give you the ability to, to adjust and change. So I'm going to say that's good enough for right now. And I'm going to select one of the painting brushes. So I'm going to select the basic paint just to cover this. Uh, very quickly. I'm just over here, just selected a color, and now I've painted that. You can see I didn't need to do any masking, it just painted the object and ignored the transparent areas. And just uh, in case you're new to the studio uh, programs, the background layer is uh, with this little icon here is hidden. If we show it, we'll see it's just a white background. But for Liquid Studio, I typically recommend working with the background as a default. The idea is you may be creating objects uh, like such as a sphere which you want to import into uh, another program whether it's a Pro Studio or, or some other art program or usage in a bigger uh, image that you're working on. So here I've painted this basic outline and using some of the other brushes I'm going to select darken just to give it a little bit of a shading. And you can see again, you don't have to worry about masking anything, it's just painting the object itself. I'm going to select Lighten, give it some, some highlight. I've had, the default is actually to have a color white here, and that's why I wasn't painting. I had switched that uh, inadvertently. So we have a basic shading, but to smooth that out, going to select the basic blender here and blend things a little bit. 
And of course you can go, always go back in and add a little more shading or a little more highlight. And you'll see now one of the big features of Liquid Studio, I'm going to blend this just a little bit more, is then, so we have this basic sphere and it's maybe not perfect, but you can, if you want to adjust it, you can go back to your liquid brushes. I'm going to go back to Liquid Smoother and you can keep adjusting it. Even though you've already painted it, you can still go and adjust it more. Typically with the smoother, if you pick a bigger, bigger brush, it will actually give you, can give smoother results. Uh, the opacity actually controls the strength of the result on, on something like the smoothing brush. So here a very basic sphere. It's, as I said, quick and not perfect, but I'm going to modify it a little bit still. I'm going to go to Liquid Line Erase. And you can see with the line brush, it actually, uh, you can uh, move it around a bit. So here I'm holding the control key and I can actually move its uh, origin spot. If I hold the shift key, it's actually uh, bound to either horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to keep it vertical. And I'm going to crop, let me undo that, and I'm going to crop the, the bottom a bit. So I've cropped the bottom, but I'm going to go back now to the liquid smoother. Let's make that a little smaller. A little stronger. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to press the plus key. Now I'm using shortcut keys, but a lot of the functionality is, most of the functionality is available through through menus as well. Uh, but I obviously shortcut keys and a being a little faster. So I'm going to smooth this bottom, round it out a bit to give it a little more of a 3D approach. And again, the idea here is you can keep modifying these shapes even though you've painted them. So here we have the basic, basic sphere that's been cut off and, and rounded a bit at the bottom. I'm going to create a new layer here just by tapping on one of the empty spots and I'm going to go back to Liquid Basic. Let me zoom back up and I'm going to hit the minus key. And I'm going to pan this image over a little bit. I'm going to press the space and center it to where I want. And I'm going to draw something here at the bottom. But you can see, this is on a layer above this, so I'm just going to drag it below. And I'm going to select the basic shaper, liquid shaper. I'm going to shape this a little bit, actually. And I'm going to go to my the smoother brush. and smooth it out a bit. Now I'm going to paint this. So you can see what I'm ending up here with is a very basic uh, uh, illustrative mushroom uh, they may use in some uh, fantasy picture that you're working on. I'm going to select basic, basic paint and paint this stem and I'm going to go and do the same type of shading here that I did on the on the top. And give it a little bit of a highlight as well. Yeah, that's a little bit too big. Control Z to undo. Maybe it's a little too strong. Control Z one more time. And that ought to be good enough. I'm going to give a little more highlight here once more. So now we have this uh, basic shape. But say we didn't like this color we've already uh, had on the top, we've already painted it, but you could use uh, another brush such as the colorize brush. I'm going to select that, and if we wanted to make it a different color similar to the stem, let's do that maybe uh, 
increase that size a little bit. And you can play around with that, colorize, or you can recolor and reshade. It's up to you. Uh, so you get the basic idea. I'm going to go back to red here. And then when you want to pull this image into another program, uh, one of the easiest ways is with copy and paste. So you can go to the edit menu and say copy merged. It's going to merge the layers uh, for the copy operation. And because the background layer is hidden, you're going to end up with the object without any background, which often is what you want. So I'm going to say copy merged. I'm going to switch to a new page, just hit control uh, page down, and I'm going one to a new page, and I'm just going to do uh, paste into. So you can get, you can see this is the object was pasted into here, uh, the layers were merged, and the background uh, did not come across, which is typically what you'd want to work, uh, what result you'd want when you're pulling an image or an object into another program. So obviously, obviously there's a lot more. To know in here and I'll try to cover a couple of real quick uh, features just to give you some highlights. I'm going to switch again to one more page. I'm going to hit the page down. I'm going to go back to Liquid Basic. Uh, one thing to point out which is in here which is different than some of the other studio programs by Pixar is the symmetry uh, menu. If you hit uh, symmetry and horizontal everything you do will be horizontally mirrored. And you could also do the same with uh, vertical or horizontal and vertical. Let's uh, clear that layer. So this is a global setting. So every brush will pick that up and use it. So if you did that and then you wanted to do some basic painting, you'll see everything is mirrored uh, according to the symmetry settings. Uh, while masking is somewhat automatic on the objects, full masking is available. There are some masking brushes as well. But I won't go into the details on that. Saving your work, uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, save image to a file or load from a file. There are some tools in here for cropping and panning. Uh, if you're not happy with the basic color theme, there are a few other color themes here that are available. And some operation or menu op options up here for doing some basic uh, zooming, undoing, and, re and uh, and redo. These also are all available through keyboard shortcuts as well. So hopefully that gives you a you know, basic idea of how Liquid Studio is intended to work. I, of course, uh, uh, be creative and find other ways to use the, the brushes as well. Thank you. Bye.